All right, Jesus. So this is the third time through. I did one where my girlfriend asked me the questions. It took a long time, and there's rambling. And so I'm looking at finishing editing, and I thought, oh, I'm almost done. I'm not almost done. Oh, my God. So this is harder than I thought. I've realized one of the things is there's so many questions you can't do like I normally like to and de-ravel it down into all of these things and balanced comments. There's, a, there's sort of a, a lack of comments. Uh, I mean, excuse me, a lack of uh, balance required. So I'm simply going to do this again and go through, and it shouldn't be an hour and a half long video or hours of editing. I mean, I would have done the, the editing, okay, a couple hours of editing every once in a while for certain videos, no problem, but it's just, it's got so messy, and I've been doing other things. So this is just going to be now very much more efficient. So. Um, the second time I went through, I had already seen two thirds of the questions. This time, I've, I've seen them all. I'm going to reuse the part where I replied to the one video question um, that I filmed with my girlfriend. So we'll do that now. Um, the first question is the only video question. So and I've got the uh, I've got the thing here with um, the two questions in it uh, both set up. So here we go. Number one. What person inspired your polit political or philosophical thoughts? But my tool end finishes when I have yeah, the end time code. Nice. Um, so that was philosophical or political. I mean, um, the main people I would say are in my life, my two grandmothers, um, or politically, uh, George Orwell has been a huge influence on my thoughts. Um, I obviously like Piero of Ellis as my namesake, but, uh, but I already had the thoughts by the time I discovered him, but it turns out, historically, yeah, that was an influence. And, you know, scientists, the various scientists, because I studied them from a young age, you know, science and... Which ones? Einstein, uh, Newton's a great, but not necessarily so much more the, the, the modern... You know, Bohr, Any Faraday, modern scientists? Feynman um, is really great. So, yeah, there's a lot of good scientists, but in terms of you know picking them out, then it's a, just a personal connection. Um, and then uh, question number two: well, Do you read any fiction? I haven't been reading much fiction lately. Have you been reading much fiction or any fiction? I haven't been reading much at all. Whenever I pick up a book, I just I look for, I don't know, my brain's trying to get trained to look for apps and pop-ups and yeah, <laughs> it's hard for me to concentrate on books anymore. Yeah, I've been reading a bunch of non-fiction, but for, for uh, fiction, yes, I like fiction, um, uh, lots of kinds of fiction, uh, especially science fiction. I consider myself a little well uh, read in science fiction and that, for example, my favorite science fiction the last few years has been Greg Egan. Greg Egan. I, I, Hardly recommend looking him up. I've been reading a lot of Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah, me too, because the little guy has all, has all that. Childlings. Okay. Okay, now, I hope that was satisfactory. All right, so the questions in the comments. From Blue Toe Being, okay, describe a few strange obsessions I have. What do I do for money? My favorite philosopher. Discuss a bit about my history if I have one with hallucinogens. And what are a few enjoyable YouTube channels that you find yourself spending time on, on that others might not know about? A few strange obsessions I have. Um, I've been thinking a lot about kinetic sculptures. And for years I've, I've been thinking I would like to build some uh, rain-powered kinetic sculptures. Um, not necessarily that move around. But that that's a possibility, but that, that move in some way. Um, I'm, I'm obsessed with abstractions and logic uh, to, a, to a strange degree. What do I do for money? I program computers. Uh, my favorite philosophy, obviously, Piero of Ellis. Discuss a bit of my history if I have one with hallucinogens. Well, I've done them in, in college and um, I was working through some things and uh, they played a role in that. A difficult thing to talk about in our culture and dangerous I think you have to talk to people one-on-one -on -one about uh, 
mind-altering uh, experiences because they affect everybody differently. Um, what are a few enjoyable YouTube channels that you find yourself spending time on that others might not know about? I don't know. I like to spook. I don't really know how many people are watching or that people might not know about them. And I, and I mentioned uh, the ones, so I don't, there's, there's probably nothing here uh, like, oh, these ones that I haven't mentioned or that you don't see me replying to. I, I basically, I, I reply to, the, to, those, to those sorts of channels so you'd see them by who I was replying to, I think. Um, XY11XY says, does a pond ever flood? I don't know what you're talking about, but probably that uh, lagoon and or the bay that I took some pictures of. Tsunamis, they flood in tsunami. Um, you're uh, from Socrates856. Your views on enlightenment philosophy, toleration, egalitarianism, rational citizenship, individual freedom, brotherly empathy today. I think those are uh, oppressed philosophies. I think people that actually feel those things as opposed to just uh, um, just uh, pay lip service to them are actually and pretty much actively uh, suppressed and maligned and stressed out by our, our society. Um, I like all of those things. I think toleration is, is a beautiful thing. It allows even dogmatists to, to have some crazy dogmatic ideas um, that they can think are absolute without acting so absolute about them. Um, yeah, it's the not in a very good state right now. We, we just have the dream of those things. Uh, they have yet to be realized on you know, in complete social scales. X Machine Ghosts X. Do you think that the last humans existing before heat death will be antinatalists, transhumanists, VR cyborg, or brains in a jar linked to VR? Well, heat death, you mean when the universe just cools off and there's not enough heat concentrated to have living things and stars and stuff? Um, well, see, it, it, it's a thing. I don't believe in the whole mystical transhumanism. I think we're already transhumanists. I think there's been humans living for tens of thousands of years, places that humans can't live without clothes. We've evolved already into our technology. To me, that's trans, you know, mammalian or something. So uh, I don't think the VR cyborg thing is going to happen. Brains linked in a vat. I don't understand how that would possibly happen evolutionarily, how that could be supported. And uh, antinatalists as well. They're not going to make it to that point. So if we're talking millions of years from now, obviously it would be transhumanists. We're already transhumanists. If we continue to go this way, we'll evolve to our tools even more. So, yeah, it would be t only transhumanists. But then again, I'm not a transhumanist in the sense of, yeah, it's going to save us. I, I think it's, it's sort of, it's already happening, kind of a trivial subject for people that, that haven't really seen what's already going on in human evolution. You know, people think evolution's going to stop. No, you just change what you adapt to. People that say that, oh, humans aren't really adapting now because we don't, you know, live in the nature. You know? Well, we live in the society, and I think I'm going to call it that from now on, the nature. We, I, we live in the society, and, uh, you know, we adapt to it. So we start to evolve to its tools. What else is transhumanism pointing out? Right, so it just makes sort of a bigger deal out of something that's pretty mundane, actually. It's part of the human experience already. Uh, I like Newman says, when it comes to economics, do you adhere to the labor theory of value? The worst living philosopher, the worst dead philosopher, the least favorite YouTuber, and the most favorite YouTuber. Um, I don't adhere to any theories. Um, I believe if you mean like the Marxist idea that labor uh, is where the value in an end product comes from, yeah, labor slash energy, you know, energy of a machine can improve raw goods into a product, but of course there was labor of someone that built the machine, so it's still abstract, um, related, but ultimately has to come down to some human doing their labor, um, but probably more generally it's, um, it's that energy improves value, and value comes from energy, the reason it could come from labor is humans are are spending their energy. I don't deal with the worst this, the worst this, least favorite this. I, I don't, to me, I, to, to categorize favorites, I have to, um, I have to go look and find out what someone really thinks in detail. I don't learn that much detail about those that go in the category of, of uh, you know, worst, least liked YouTuber. I would just be someone I saw recently that I didn't like. It wouldn't be like, 
do I really dislike them as much as someone else or someone else? I don't have a what I don't like collection to choose and, and do rational rating between. And with philosophers, if you are a philosopher, then I'll give you a break on any stupid idea. And if you're not a philosopher but poses one somehow, um, which is pretty hard to do because pretty much you just have to want to be a philosopher to be one. But if you're hypocritical enough, um, then you're just posing as a philosopher. And then they wouldn't be my worst, my least favorite philosopher, would they? So most favorite YouTuber, I don't know. TED Talks is probably my most favorite channel. I like the Stanford channel a lot as well. Uh, as far as individuals, it doesn't work like that for me. Dogatron, where do you see America 10 years from now economically and culturally? Uh, well, probably the best thing would be if it's more or less here. Where could it be? Well, what if we'd spend $12 billion a month like we spend in Iraq rebuilding the uh, infrastructure of America and our allies? Uh, we could basically see all of these major problems we know of solved if we did that. See inside her says, what inspires you? Who are your influences? What were you like as a teenager? Have you ever seen a therapist? If so, for what and what ex was the experience like? What inspires me is nature and how nature works and, and visualizing the sort of the gears and organs and uh, fluids and energies and interrelations in nature and especially uh, catching what feel like glimpses of the abstract uh, elements of that reduced out of that. Who are my influences? My biggest influences, I think, were my two grandmothers. Um, they were both pretty philosophical and kind of New Age spiritual. We talk about all kinds of philosophical ideas. They encouraged me to think for myself. They had interesting ideas. They were nonconformist in ways. Um, what were you like as a teenager? Um, I was right about everything. I was r r radical. Um, I had a more radical version of the things that I think today I was less forgiving for uh, the human race to the human race and the plight that it's in. I focused only on what it had perpetrated, not really how it had gotten there. I did see a therapist. Um, I said in Stickham, probably never here though, but uh, my dad uh, kidnapped me. Um, it didn't feel like a kidnapping really at the time, but it did feel like a running away time to thing when I was nine. And they sent me to a therapist when I came back. And um, it was interesting, you know, it was funny. I like, the therapist had given me this one idea of, describe a garden in your head and there's a wall and only the, these ideas can get in and you control it and I just spent so much time on oh, build that garden and uh, I remember I went in let's talk about it and she's like well, we're not doing that today and they diagnosed me as fine I think I probably saw it three or four times but it was a misdiagnosis um, what Dynacat loves me says what drugs have you used and when did you stop or did you stop well, see, we're not in a culture where we could freely talk about that. Um, I mentioned that I tried hallucinogens in, in college. Um, you know, I, I haven't done that for a long time. Um, I drink and I smoke, which I'm trying to quit again. And, uh, you know, how are you going to been prescribed uh, Vicodin? And... Uh, so, I've been prescribed when I was 20-something Valium, too, for I had an eye twitch. They gave me Valium. I had about five of those, and it worked, by the way. Um, yeah, we're just not in a good culture where we can actually talk about that. So, that sucks, but I'm not going to get into to all of that, like a listing of, of drug experiences. Um, Skid Row Radio. Uh, top five music artists. Oh, well, let's see. Um, like, currently, I really like, uh, like, a C Citizen Cope. Um, okay, top five. Okay, I, they, they, these are, like, my, I, I love Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin. I'm going to have to put Lead Belly in there just to represent the real hardcore, the real blues. Um, I guess I'll leave Citizen Cope in there. He's he's pretty awesome, or has been. The latest stuff I like, a little bit earlier stuff, but whatever. Um, and 
David Bowie. Let's put David Bowie in there. Top five. All right. Uh, if you could go on a one-way trip to Mars when you were 80 years old, would you? This is still Skid Row Radio. Yeah, I'd go now. Um, what is your opinion of the Libyan situation? I think NATO's probably going to fuck it up. I wish Gaddafi would have stepped down so that NATO wouldn't even have had an excuse to go in. Um, he's a prick. He should go. And um, I, I believe it's a part of the Arab Spring. I don't think it's just all manufactured. I believe there really was a, an Arab awakening going on and is. But yeah, now that NATO has gotten in so deep, they're probably going to screw it up, huh? So yeah, I mean, uh, Qaddafi, if he would have stepped down, could have prevented that. I mean, there's no way NATO could have done something to prevent its involvement. If you think about geopolitics, I mean, NATO thinks about it, it's a fault. It's going to start making decisions about it. Cut off, he could have kept them out. You know, someone could say, oh, but it's his country. But see, I don't think so. I, don't know. I think it belongs to people. Who are the best? Uh, Lady on Fire. Who are the best female thinkers of the 21st century so far? This is a funny one, but um, so I was thinking about this. Like I said, I looked through these before. So my first thought immediately was Naomi Klein, but I accidentally was called her name Wolf, but Naomi Klein of the Shock Doctrine. She's awesome. You only give me 10 years, so we're going to do, you know, some quick stuff. Plus, I realized Molly Ivins lived into this century a bit, and she was awesome. So I really like her. And um, and there's others, but I think that, that should be good, because we got to keep it short. I went before I went into all oh, details about this. Do you feel women are inferior to men when it comes to thinking clearly and logically? Again, I don't know, I'm such a big tangent of this. No, obviously not. There's some areas where women, uh, some types of thinkers, you know, some, you know, uh, physicists, where I don't think women are very equally represented, right? Um, but if you go in there, the women that are there, it's obvious it's not gender, uh, whether or not the quality of your thinking in that subject can be top rate. It definitely can. So it's interesting. There's obviously reasons for demographics like that, and, and there's the fields that should study that. but. Obviously, it's not that women are inferior to men when it comes to thinking clearly. It doesn't. I know that's not the case. Do you enjoy writing or reading poetry? I enjoy writing poetry very much, reading it a little bit. If so, who are your favorite poets? Well, I'm not that well read. When I read poems, like mostly in my life, you know, for the last 20, 30 years, I don't necessarily remember the author, the name of the author. Okay, so that sort of cast me. But I do enjoy poetry enough to read it. But so, uh, without being. Um, very uh, well read or even remembering the names of poets that I have read. I really have always loved um, Edgar Allan Poe and I learned to read uh, reading Dr. Seuss so I still think he's one of my favorite poets. Tommy from the Bronx. If you were forced by military to be put in a coma for 30 years along with the rest of the population or be shot dead instantly. Thing is, after the 30 years, you are let out of your coma exactly the way you first went in. No aging or weakness, but went out of the coma. You had only 10 years to live maximum. Would you take the coma or be shot dead? Doesn't really matter why they give you the two choices as far as the other options. That's weird, and since you write, I'm wondering, is there a whole story the government has this? Thing is, I would not trust it. Why didn't the government want me in there? But they're right there with the gun. I would take it. But like if it was, uh, we're going to kill you in the morning, you get to decide. I would try to break out all night. I would rather break out, try to escape, than trust them. Uh, why do they want this done? But given that it's really like, no, we're going to shoot you right now or get into the machine. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd get in the machine and see see what. But I'd have a feeling I wouldn't really wake up or I'd wake up a evil cyborg it takes 10 years to and I just uh, is there something behind that it's somehow like a question I only half understand and but I'm disturbed by okay why is the military making this um, dilemma happen okay great text whatever possessed you uh, for you to play out this inane YouTube fan wow Basically, it's because, you know, when you find that there's something you're not doing just because the cool kids don't do it, then to be really cool, you gotta do it. So you're not posing. Garrett2142. 
Do you think the two-party system works better than the multi-party system? No. I think the multi-party system works better, but because of the way our political systems underneath them work, you still have this, this uh, tendency to s split into the two parts where factions are sort of playing the role of throwing things off balance and getting a disproportionate control. So, I mean, they're both screwed, but the multi-party, I think, is a better idea. What I'd really like to see is something like the Senate uh, made non-geographical. We just vote for the top hundred thinkers and philosophers and they all go to the Senate. And, uh, and I'd like to see IRV so that you could have a true multi-party system um, instead of just this, this sort of weird... Because see, when you have a 51% uh, of game rule in your election system or in any kind of system, it's going to tend to... Um, evolve things that hover around the 51 percent around that marker that's it's it's just going to do that and so there's a problem mathematically with how we've had uh, stuff set up irv voting would help but it's still it also wouldn't solve that problem the weird thing in canada is that come on even in in the u.s the democratic party is not really one party there's big conservatives progressives have nowhere else to go it's it's multiple as well, and I think, frankly, that our blue dog Democrats are always in a coalition with the Republicans. And in the U.S., we are always in that situation. And when it looks like the Democratic Party is running things, that's when it gets most confusing, because in reality, a big part, like 20, 30 percent of the Democratic Party is actually, uh, you know, trying to make sure that the rest of the party doesn't get anywhere and they're holding on to the Republicans and they have a chokehold. Um, yeah, great text. Also, I just thought, well, you know, I want to see what it was like. And sure, it was different because, like, you got to go quicker and there's all questions all over the place. And mostly, if I don't do it again, it's because it's a lot of work the way I took it. Maybe if there's a quicker way. I could just read all the questions a couple times for a couple of days and then just go do it because on one take, I don't have a four hour video. Here I go again. Tangent. Okay. Mass looks. If you could build a time capsule containing any 10 things, it'll magically be uh, preserved in, a, in, in status until it was open 250 years from now. What would you put in it? Um, and my first thought, and then I stumbled around about it, but I'm just going back to my first thought is that I would put the DNA, I would put, you know, by the DNA of the 10 most endangered animals. I would be open to arguments about endangered plants, but probably endangered animals. Who is my favorite modern painter? When I read this by Andrew Weiss, I immediately said, Salvador Dali. And then he says, post 30s, and I'm going, oh, geez, Salvador Dali. And I checked, and he has 30s. I'm like MC Escher. Oh. Turns out I don't like any, any painters to the 30s, I guess. If you were the president of a college and you had to eliminate one department from the curriculum, which would you eliminate and why? Well, it's a toss-up between the Army, Navy, and the Air Force. And I checked at Berkeley uh, where I went, and yeah, they do have to, uh, academic departments of the Army, Navy, and Air Force. And I'm fine with that they do, but we have to cut one. I think if we cut one of those, um, probably the Air Force, just because the Army and the Navy, sorry, Air Force can kind of cover for that. Um, Radical Awesomeness says, is that some Star Wars soundtrack? No, it's not. It, in the video, uh, announcing the, the questions video. No, that is not. It is the iMovie soundtrack for Film Noir. What do I, uh, Pax Gorilla, what do I do for a living? I still program computers. Dang it, why can't I be witty? I don't know. No, don't answer that one. I already did. Bad Piero, how did you know I was going to answer? Okay. Adrian101882. I never pronounce people's numbers. I, for some reason, I feel like doing that right now. Throughout your life, has it been more often than not that your close friends have shared many of the same views which you hold? Well, you know, incidentally, yeah, but no. In general, it, I would say characterizing this, I mean, it's, in, it's inevitable. Like, that we talk in English, you know, I mean, but is that a same view, like religion, politics, aesthetics? No, no, my friends have a wide range of views on religion, politics, and aesthetics, but maybe in the 
area of politics, most of my close friends actually have had similar views. Alan Watts, Robert Anton Wilson, Terrence McKenna, do you give a fuck about any of them? At, asked by Black Acid Lizard. Really, no. Uh, Robert Anton Wilson, uh, I forget exactly when, has pissed me off before. Terrence McKenna is, I could take or leave him. Uh, he was on the big island here, you know, it's okay, I like that kind of um, mushy stuff, but the 2012, uh, yeah, not too fond. Alan Watts, you know what, he's inspiring to listen to, the voice and stuff, but I mean, I only know from videos on YouTube, really, and people have had his voice reading and talking or whatever, and with nice visuals, seems okay. Uh, quick answer, damn, I'm supposed to kick, the quick answer is no. How do you, uh, how can you get by in a capitalist world as a software engineer with a skeptic's attitude? I don't know how you could get by with the skeptic's attitude if you're not a software engineer, but it helps uh, when you are one. And then if you have a skill um, then that, that you can prove, then they have to put up with you. Question one, do you have any pictures of you in a wetsuit that you can put in a video? I should cut in what my girlfriend said here, no. How can you get by in a capitalist world as a software engineer with a skeptic's attitude? I just feel like answering that again. Um, they don't really have to put up with you. I'm actually, uh, uh, my bad attitude and skepticness and all of that is, uh, I still come in way under the radar of difficult to deal with software engineers. I actually can communicate outside of uh, the subject of computers and things that give me some, some uh, some advantages as well. Better question from Black Acid Lizard. I think this destroys all observation dependent observers, ways collapse or hypothesis drawn from the two slit experiment. And then he puts a link um, from Physics World. Uh, what do I think? I think that does not destroy that observation dependent stuff. If you see what they did, they did not scan one, that is not a scan those pictures of one photon and what it's doing or anything like that. It's a statistical reproduction uh, using some interesting quantum techniques. It's very interesting. The, you know, the simplified interpretation of it, no, it doesn't in any way change anything uh, about quantum mechanics. Um, so no, it doesn't, it doesn't change anything. It's, it's an interesting result, but there's no fundamental, fundamentally new thing discovered by it. And Seinrich, do you think that Greatix has run out of ideas and has resorted to scraping the dregs barrel for views in a final bit of desperation? No. Do you think in Manham has overreacted when he was called creepy for trying to get in Chris's knickers? Uh, don't care. Not really um, subject to an opinion as far as I'm concerned in my case. What's the one favorite movie of yours? You can list three others if you do not have just one favorite. Um, Brazil. Uh, uh, Braskafarian. Uh, okay, Piro, since this, since this is the opportunity to get off the usual philosophical topics, I'm going to get as real... You guys write... See, when I'm normally reading these, I don't, you know, just in my mind, I don't even notice all these, but it's hard to read them out loud. I'm going to ask a really down-to-earth question. Okay, I'm going to ask a really down-to-earth question. Jeez, maybe I will proof my things. People are reading my things in their head to understand them. It might be hard. You seem like a good guy, someone I'd be happy to go to the pub and have a drink with. So my question is this, what is your drink of choice? Uh, scotch. I like scotch. Why don't you grow a fucking beard, dude? Thing would be grand, I can tell. Not a goat see, but I beers all the way around, so why not Charles Dance? Well, I have, you can see my icon, and you're, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. I have, uh, a, I, I do have a goatee, and I... Um, I don't know what a goatee is, but maybe it's the same thing. I, I do have a goatee, naturally. Um, I, I have Indian blood or something. I don't fill out. Sorry. So no big Santa beer for me. Um, last one. South Sa South Saturn Delta 213. One, what are your thoughts on the evidential status intuition is taken to enjoy across the various areas of philosophy, e.g. in reaction to thought experiments? Can the fallibility of intuition be suitably mitigated in a way which makes it a suitable source from which to draw philosophical conclusions? Um, I think that intuition is material in the following way, right? We get a bunch of sense data, 
our brain is able to do a process that isn't really categorization, but a parallel process of some sort that is sort of analogous to categorization, but it, it works in this parallel way. Let's just leave undescribed in detail, but we know that it does this and somehow comes up with the gestalt, a single image. Now we think of the gestalt, visual gestalts often. But let's just talk about gestalts like uh, an intuition that something is beautiful or that it's dangerous. You know, before we know why it seems beautiful or why it seems dangerous, what are these gestalts? Well, can you can you draw um, a philosophical conclusion from them? Well, probably not, depending on what I assume you mean philosophical conclusion is. But you can draw a conclusion that this is a clue. This is where I'll go look for more information. Like if you have the idea of a fear of a danger, you start looking for the things that prove or disprove that there really is a danger. You know, if you have a, a intuition that something is, is working and, and Eureka it's coming together, then you look really closely and you take the data. You can't just take that feeling and go, thus this is right, it made me feel good and thus it's right. No, it made me feel good so I'm going to investigate it. And then, you know, you may, your, your, your emotions and perceptions of Gestalt may turn out to be good divining rods for you to take you to the data or maybe they won't. So in either way, they're somewhat you know, detached from the logical, the philosophical reasoning part and even from the evidential part, except for, again, they are material. And we know in some of these cases, the brain's pretty good at collecting you know, um, these gestalts and setting up an alarm that says, hey, let's go look at that. But you know, just like real alarms, security alarms, you know, most times they go off, it's a false alarm. So no, you don't conclude, you don't say the alarm went off, therefore somebody's robbed us. You know, you say the alarm went off, therefore I better go check if somebody's robbed us. Two, uh, oh, and I was also gonna say Einstein, you know, depending on your intuition, you can do really well. Einstein concluded some things, but he knew, okay, this doesn't mean it's true, it just means I want somebody to, to do the experiments to check. So, you know, that's about how well it can work, which is pretty good. And, you know, for better or worse, he popularized the thought experiment. Okay. Have you ever felt, also by South Center Delta, or been told by someone else that immersing yourself in philosophical topics and debates may be detrimental to your mental health and or general health and well-being? Yes. And I have even come to learn that for some people it probably would be. I don't think they, you know, sometimes when you take a philosophical journey, the only sense in which you're safe is if you finish it. You know, if you stop and get waylaid somewhere, then you have a real problem. So you have to, to finish. And I imagine in your life there's a point where you have to get to a nice camping spot and, and, and you know, build your final camp, okay? Um, and, uh, uh, but yes, you know, I'm the kind of guy that talks philosophy at a party, finds the other person that wants to talk philosophy. We do it many times. It's like, why are you talking heavy topics, man? Why you two should be so kickstand? And it's not a lot of cake stands. I've never been to a party where people did that, actually. But you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah, um, I've been told and told and told that. And it would be very disconcerting if society itself wasn't to, you know, totally crazy. Um, so, yeah, might have the opposite meaning. It's like immersing that is the only way to get my mental health. All right, good. See, I did it all. 31 minutes.